Hello. My name is Olaud Iakieno. I first visited Birmingham more than 200 years ago. In those days I was known as Gustavus Vassar. I had written my autobiography and was touring Britain to talk about my life. I am one of the 11 million Africans who were transported across the Atlantic to work on plantations in North and South America and the West Indies. I survived and became a free man, which is why you know my name. I was born into the Igbo tribe in the country that you now call Nigeria. My father was a chief and we had a good life. One day, when everyone else was out in the fields, people from an enemy tribe came and captured my little sister and me. They sold us as slaves. I was 10 years old. I never saw my father and mother or my sister again. After about six months I was taken to the coast. I had never seen the sea before and did not understand what it was. I was sold to white men and put on a ship. I had never seen white people before. I was terrified because I thought they were ghosts. Then I went on the most terrible journey of my life, the Middle Passage, the journey across the Atlantic Ocean from Africa to America. You are going to learn about what I and other Africans suffered on that terrible journey. We landed in Barbados and men came to buy us. It was the time of the sugar harvest and slaves were urgently needed to cut the sugar, crush it, and boil it. When you find out about the life and work of slaves on the sugar plantations, you will realize that I was very lucky. I was too small and no one wanted to buy me because they thought I would be too weak to work. I was sent to a plantation in Virginia to be given good food so that I would gain strength and value. Then I was sold to Michael Pascal, a captain in the Royal Navy, to be his personal servant. I spent more than six years serving on ships of the Royal Navy during the war against the French that you call the Seven Years' War. We sailed across oceans and visited many countries. That was when I first came to England. I got to know members of Captain Pascal's family, his nephew Richard became my particular friend. They taught me to speak English and to read and write. I was baptized as a Christian at St. Margaret's Church in Westminster. When we were on board ship, I had to shave my master and cut his hair. I looked after his clothes and made sure he had everything he wanted, but I also experienced the horror and excitement of sea battles against the French. There were about 50 of us boys on a ship, and during a battle it was our job to collect canisters of gunpowder from the hold, below the waterline, and take them to the gun crews on the gun deck. Once I took part in a press gang. Capturing men to force them to serve in the Navy. While I served on board ship, the Royal Navy paid me wages, even though I was Captain Pascal's slave. If you look in the pay books of the Royal Navy you can't see my name written down. I also made a bit of money shaving and cutting the hair of the other sailors. I've always been enterprising and business-minded. When I was about 17, the Navy promoted me to the rank of able seaman, and then my master did a terrible thing. He sold me. I was taken to the West Indies. In Montserrat, I was sold to Robert King. Because I could read and write and was an experienced sailor, I again escaped the horrors of the plantation. Mr. King employed me to conduct his business around the islands of the Caribbean. At the same time, I did a bit of trading on my own account. From my business, I managed to save the 70 pounds that was the price of my freedom. Mr. King accepted the money and manumitted me. As I free man I once again went to sea, visiting new countries and satisfying my curiosity about the world. I traveled on the voyage to find the Northwest Passage. I believe I am the first African to travel to the Arctic. I have seen the midnight sun and eaten the flesh of polar bears. After all my adventures, I settled in London. I married my wife Susan, an Englishwoman, and we had two beautiful little daughters. I became determined to help my fellow Africans who were condemned to a life of misery. I worked with my friends from the Society for the Abolition of Slavery, Granville Sharp, Thomas Clarkson and William Wilberforce, you will meet them later. I traveled throughout Britain talking about my life and opening people's eyes to the horrors of slavery. I helped to set up the colony of Sierra Leone as an African home for freed slaves. In order to understand my life, you will need to know why so many millions of my countrymen were taken across the Atlantic and into grinding misery. 
We were part of a great economic movement called the Triangle Trade, which your teacher will explain to you. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.